Today's video is going to be awesome, man. I'm going to show you exactly how to take notes using Anki and Anki alone, and then use those notes to convert them into flashcards. This is applicable to literally anything. You can watch lectures online with it. You can watch your med school lectures using this technique. You can watch um, YouTube videos that explain particular concepts using this technique. You can watch online med ed. You can do anything with this technique. So I highly recommend you guys watch this whole video. And if you do, drop a like, comment, share, and subscribe. So let's get straight into it. It's going to be fun. All right, welcome, welcome. So first thing you're going to want to do is open up your Anki deck and also have it open right next to the lecture that you're planning to watch. And by having these two side by side, you can now facilitate working from one screen. And now you'll see as I've started, I actually don't really do anything on Anki aside from take notes in the extra column while the lecture is going on. And so it's kind of like using Anki as a Word document almost. In this particular case, I'm listening to a lecture on plasma cell issues, specifically plasma cell dyscrasias. And you'll see that what I'm doing is as Dr. Williams is going through each of the plasma cell issues, I'm taking notes in the extra column of Anki. Again, just pretending like it's a normal Microsoft Word document. And you'll see that the way I take notes in medical school is usually like summarize the path of physiology. So that's what I did first. And now I'm actually talking a bit about how I would go about diagnosing multiple myeloma uh, and what the test results would look like. And that's actually a really good way to take notes. One, discuss the underlying disease. And then the two, second thing is go about discussing how you would diagnose that disease if you were to try to work it up. In this particular case, you'll see that I actually summarized the first disease, which is multiple myeloma, and I said that it's basically a neoplasm of plasma cells, which are basically antibody-producing cells. And then you'll see that when I talked about the workup, you'll see that you can do an SPEP, which is a serum electrophoresis, you can do a UPEP, which is a urine electrophoresis, and you can also do a skeletal survey. And you'll see that next to each of the tests, I showed you why those tests were relevant. And SPEP is relevant because uh, plasma cells create, secrete a bunch of proteins into the plasma, which can be picked up on serum. And then you can see a UPEP is relevant because the proteins will be in the urine. And you can see that a skeletal survey is important because multiple myeloma leads to osteoclastic lesions in the bone. Now I want to call your attention to the third aspect in my notes, which is always the treatment. So you always do the disease overview, the diagnostic test, and then the treatment. Those are the three most important things. And when you have all three of them, you can move on to the next disease, which is what I'm doing now. I'm going to now speed this up even further, primarily because these next two diseases, even though I'm taking notes on them, they follow the exact same format. I go over the underlying pathophysiology of the disease, followed by the diagnostic testing, followed by how you would go about treating it. And I do that over and over again for every disease that gets mentioned in a particular lecture. In this lecture, it just so happened that the second disease that was mentioned was monoclonal gammopathy of unknown significance, and the third disease was Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. Uh, and you'll see that I go through the same process, which is um, pathophysiology, diagnostic tests, and treatment. And that's ultimately what most of your tests will be about. And so now that we've taken these notes, I want to show you how I now utilize this format to make flashcards. So let's skip to that. In terms of transferring these notes and making them into flashcards, what I'm going to do is start with the first disease and copy that blurb about the first disease, which in this case was multiple myeloma, and put it at the top above that line that I've drawn in. By doing this, I can now look at the notes that I have specifically about multiple myeloma and make flashcards that are relevant to exactly the things that I had written down. So you'll see that the first flashcard I make is, is multiple myeloma related to IgG or IgM. And you'll see that that flashcard was made purely based on that knowledge that I had written down in my notes, which is multiple myeloma is a very clear IgG secreting plasma cell. And so now I'm going to do this again. I'm going to use the notes underneath and I'm going to show you how I make a flashcard from it. So this flashcard is going to specifically talk about the test results. I'm saying if a patient had multiple myeloma, what would you expect to see? Would you expect to see a positive or negative in the following tests? And by doing this, I'm testing my understanding of the diagnostic workup of multiple myeloma. And so you'll see that I said that you'd get a positive UPEP, a positive SPEP, and a positive skeletal survey. And that's exactly right, because in multiple myeloma, you do expect to have all of those things. And you bet your ass that on USMLE step one or step two, they will test you on that, right? And so I'm going to do another flashcard now, again, based entirely off of the notes that are present in that extra column. And this one is basically asking, what do you see on bone marrow biopsy when you uh, look at a patient who has multiple myeloma? and you expect to see more than 10% plasma cells because that's what's diagnostic. I'm now gonna speed up the rest of this because I use the same process, which is utilize the information below to create educational flashcards. But the good part about this process is that 
each of these flashcards now has a ton of supplementary information right below it. And I know exactly where that information is coming from because I'm the one who took those notes. And so now when I look at these flashcards, the most relevant part of the flashcard is right underneath in that extra column. And if I wanted to know more information, more supplementary information, that's going to be attached even below that long, long, long line. And that has the whole notes for the entire lecture. So I pretty much, you know, hit two birds with one stone by doing this process. I take my notes and convert them into flashcards. Once I'm done making my flashcards related to multiple myeloma, I delete that whole block, I go down and pick the next disease, which in this case was MGUS, and I copy that and I paste that above the big line that I made. And now what I'll do is use this information about MGUS to make a bunch of flashcards related to MGUS. And again, the principle will be exactly the same. But the only thing that I changed was the fact that now my emphasis is not going to be on plasma cells or multiple myeloma for that matter, it's now going to be on MGUS. But again, below that big, 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 huge line, everything about that lecture is still there. So if at any point I wanted to compare MGUS to multiple myeloma, or if I wanted to compare MGUS to Waldenstrom's even, everything was below that line. But the good part is, more often than not, when I'm doing this card, I'm going to want to know, oh my god, all this stuff about MGUS, where did I get this information from? Well, that information came right in the extra column, and that's why that part related to MGUS is what I put right, above, right at the top above that really long line. Just to kind of give you guys the whole insight, I'm going to just keep going through this really fast just to show you the types of flashcards I make and why these flashcards can be helpful. And maybe this will give you guys an idea as to how you can make your flashcards. But you'll see that I don't make too many flashcards. Maybe try to limit it to five to seven per disease and try to make them very relevant to diagnostic workup. And now let's go ahead and focus on the next disease, which is Waldenstrom's. I'm going to show you this for the third time to really hammer it home. I'm going to delete that part at the top that had information about MGUS, and now I've replaced it with Waldenstrom's macroglobulinemia. And the whole point of this is to now make flashcards related to macroglobulinemia, and you'll see that I'm following the exact same process. Use the notes underneath to make very target-directed flashcards. Boy up again, again, purely for the sake of allowing you guys to see how I'm making these flashcards, what are good flashcards, what aren't good flashcards. Again, want to have very short answers, very concise answers, very high yield answers, which is why I always focus on diagnostic workup, maybe a question specifically about the underlying pathophys, and every now and then lab tests and relating lab tests from one disease to another. But if you follow this format for any lecture, any video, any content that you see on YouTube, it will work flawlessly. And the good part about this is it's literally two in one. You never have to take notes separately. All your notes are going to be in the flashcard. And that way, when you now go back to the flashcard, if you ever have questions, oh, look at you, you already have all the notes you made to reference to them. So now I want to just end this video with one last comment. The comment I want to end on is even though you're going to be doing these flashcards, it's not important to just do them. It's also important to reinforce the flashcards with questions. So you'll see that after I do flashcards, I almost always follow it up with questions. And that's what I wanted to end on. Thank you all for watching that. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it makes sense. Again, like, comment, share, subscribe if you like these videos. Steve says hi, homie, always out here supporting me through these videos. Thanks for watching again. See you in the next one. Peace.